Welcome to T21 Mom. Hi friends, it's me, Mary, mom to Ainsley, who has Down syndrome and the dual diagnosis of autism, and I'm living life my way. Well, welcome back to the T21 Mom podcast, and I so appreciate you being here. And this is episode 117. You know, I know I've been having a little bit of a a late start this year. You know, I've been really putting a lot of thought into, you know, where I want to see things go with this podcast. And, you know, I'm pretty much doing it all on my own now. So it's a lot of work and, you know, trying to think of new episodes and new things that I want to share on the podcast. So, you know, obviously if there's something you would love to hear or know more about, you know, let me know and I'll see what I can do to try to make that happen, you know, because I really feel privileged that I can share this platform for all of you out there. And, and it's a real labor of love. I love doing it, but it does take a quite a bit of work to put it all together. But like I said, it's a real joy in doing it. And, but also just trying to really make that time to make these episodes happen. But you know, now we're back in the full swing of school. And we had a a really nice Christmas break that seems so long ago now. And we even had some snow in January. And school was actually closed for two days. You know, this is a big deal in Vancouver. We are very ill equipped for a lot of snow. I can't remember offhand how much we got in 24 hours, but it was definitely significant and not like the rest of Canada where they are much more prepared for a lot of snow and even a sudden dump of snow. But even though we knew it was coming, it was really hard to keep on top of it. And it was a real challenge, but I'm sure the kids really loved being off of school for two days. Not really sure what they're going to do to make up for those two lost days. I haven't heard anything about it, but I guess we'll just wait and see if they decide to try to make it up somehow. Not really sure on that. And, you know, Ainsley was a really late walker. She didn't walk until just after her fourth birthday and she's never really been fond of the snow and we don't tend to get a lot of it like we did recently get but before when she did try to walk in it I think also because you know like I said she was a late walker she never really felt I felt very stable walking in the snow but this time you know, I thought, let's try it and let's go for a little walk. And, you know, she was all bundled up in snow pants and, you know, a good puffy jacket and winter boots. And she did really awesome. You know, she really, I wouldn't say really enjoyed it, but what she did really enjoy, she loved just flopping down into the snow. There was all these big snow banks where people had shoveled snow and she just loved to just drop right into it. I, I don't know. I guess it just felt fun. And, you know, we had a nice little walk and it was just really nice to see and to get out for a little bit, you know, because we'd been home for a couple of days, but it was, it was fun. You know, it was a lot of snow. So I was really impressed that she was walking in it. I, most people had shoveled their walks, not all, but most, which obviously made it easier. And uh, she, you know, we had a, a good time. It took us a while to walk. We didn't even walk all that far, but it did take us quite a while to do it. But it was, it was great. It was great to see that she could do it. And uh, we had a little snowball fight and it was just, it was fun. It was a fun day. And school is going just so 
well. You know, she is making friends and she's engaging in activities on her own without prompting. You know, these things are just all making me so happy and I guess a little less anxious about school. You know, she also loves to watch the kids play basketball. There's a court right outside her classroom and she will bring her own little stool. They, her teacher, EA and her EA, they got her a little fold up stool and she knows exactly where it is and she gets it every day and she'll go put it out on the court and watch. Initially, she would sit a little too close to the net so they put a mark on the ground and told her this is where you know she can sit if that's what she wants to do to watch the basketball game and she also often gets up and plays and the kids are really receptive to her and including her and it's just so wonderful to hear these stories you know I school I've always had some apprehension but she's doing okay and you know she's also learning how to follow like social cues for example her EA told me that without prompting she followed the other kids back into the class and that was really great to hear you know, and her EA, like, I can tell that she really loves him. She's always uh, has a big smile on her face when she sees him and gives him a big hug. And he is just really enthusiastic and, and just really great with Ainsley. It just makes me so happy. And he's really been looking for opportunities for her to shine and it's just so lovely to see you know I like I said I've sometimes school I've just had a lot of apprehension about her fitting in and you know what she was doing there and you know and even what she was doing at school and this year has been you know, I would say pretty awesome. You know, I feel so much better this year. Ainsley's excited to go to school. You know, it just, it seems like it's turning into a really great year for her. You know, her EA, he'll write long notes in her communication book, which I love reading. And recently, she's also been independently going up to staff and some students at school and asking, how are you? And so this is pretty new. You know, I'm really seeing her language take off. I've been waiting literally forever for this. And so it's it's so exciting, you know, to think that you know, maybe we're on the cusp of this language explosion and, you know, I can almost see that we'll be able to have some type of conversation, hopefully in the near future. So I'm really excited about that. And then today her EA told me that Ainsley actually took her glasses off and handed them to him and said, can you wash please? And I was just so excited to hear this because I have never heard her say something like that. And she asked a full question and she needed some help and she used good manners. I was just so happy to hear that. And and of course, her EA said, Of course we will do that for you because I always tell her if you use a full sentence, you can get whatever you want. She often loves to, it's 
kind of petered out a little bit, but she loves to get uh, what we call hot lava. It's essentially like a piggyback sometimes up the stairs or what have you. And, and I tell her, if you could tell me in a big sentence, then you can get it. So she's motivated and she often will do that. It does take a little bit of prompting sometimes, but she can do it. And it's becoming a little bit more natural, I think, for her as well to to ask for some of those things. And, and they're also trying to tweak a little bit at school. You know, like, for example, she said, can you wash, please? You know, instead of her saying, I want, they're trying at school to use different phrases with her and, you know, just trying to expand her, her language and her vocabulary. So it's been really exciting to see. And I'm just so happy for her. It just, it really just fills my heart. I, like I said, I have been waiting and waiting so long for some of these breakthroughs. And it just, as we all know, when your kid hits these milestones is big, you know, and we celebrate big. So it's, I'm excited to see what, what's coming over the next few months. And, and Ainsley's EA also noticed, you know, that he, he mentioned that they've noticed that she's kind of like in a learning pocket right now and that they are so excited to work on new things, you know, and school hasn't always been the easiest. It's been challenging at times and it often looks quite different than I guess what I expected or what I envisioned, but you know, I can see that she is happy at school. She loves going to school, you know, and she has a small group of genuine friends. And that really makes my heart just happy, happy for her. And I feel like I can almost breathe a little bit, relax a little bit. It's, it seems to be going, you know, well and I'm just excited I'm excited for the future and excited to see where these things go for her and for this year of the podcast it's season five now and I I know when I first started this I I don't think I really looked that far ahead I wasn't really sure where this was going to go or where it was going to take me you know, and I really look forward to bringing you more interesting stories, you know, helpful advice with different experts. But also, I would really love for you, the listener, to be a part of the show. I've been thinking about this for quite a bit now and and you know, about where I'd kind of like this podcast to go over the next year. And I would really love to hear about your diagnosis story. I would love to share these different diagnosis stories. And we all have one. I had a prenatal diagnosis. Perhaps yours was a birth diagnosis. Or in some cases, I know people who it was months later that they received the diagnosis. And I even have a friend who's a nurse and she told me of a child who was five who just recently got a diagnosis of Down syndrome. So five years, five years old. And I was stunned to hear that. I don't know any details about it, but just that it was a little boy. And he finally got a diagnosis of Down syndrome at the age of five. So I would love to hear your story. You know, how has your child changed you? What was it like when you learned that your child had an extra chromosome? And do you see the world differently? What would you like others to know? You know, to know about our amazing community or just about you and your child, you know, and if so, if you would like to share your diagnosis story, go to t21mum.com and just send me a little email and 
let me know a little bit about you and your story and and if you want to be on the show and we can work something out because I would love to hear different people's stories as like I said everyone has one and you know and I think it's important to share these stories you know I've heard some not great diagnosis stories and others where it was joyful and a celebration and I think it's important that we share these stories with our community and today the first day of season five it's Valentine's Day so I hope that you all have had a lovely day with those that are important to you and those that you love and once again thank you so much for listening it truly means so much to me so keep on loving on your rocking kiddos and I'll see you next time